Hello, welcome to Code User Group 2023. Myself Anand, an architect for SDM product line. And today I will present you a demo about Nokia SDM evolution towards 5G advanced. Obvious evolution of 5G networks to 5G is not only about functional capabilities, but true cloud native architecture, day one and day two automation capabilities based on native DevOps, and most importantly, the production of reuse from current investment that you all made in 3G and 4G network. The various use cases of demonstration mentioned below details out how we stand out in the market from other vendors, especially with large Nokia SDM installation base in the world. With all this, Nokia SDM solution is arguably a most important solution that help communication service providers get the benefits from the many opportunities that 5G is creating. The first one among them, the seamless evolution. What I mean by seamless evolution? The 5G services addition to the existing infrastructure by protecting the current investment, that is 1NDS or SGL, the authentication centers, the progening systems, that is nothing but CRM systems, the CSPs doesn't require to invest any additional thing, either in their subscriber data or in the IT infrastructure or in the authentication centers, etc. Instead, we use them from the existing Nokia SDM solution by giving a small extra compute and storage for 5G. And the second one is the new 5G functionalities that we added in the recent past. Now, the 5G is picking up day by day. Now, 5G roaming is one of the advantageous things that we added in the recent past. And the steering of roaming, which is the most stringent and most useful thing for the roaming control and shared data concept that we introduced along with PLM and sets to optimize the subscriber profile that you all going to provision for 5G. So, few of them are standards driven capabilities. The Nokia SDM designed them and released them in a way that they never affect the rate of growth that subscriber profile is expect experiencing from standards. Instead, make things light and no exponential growth for deployments. And the third one is evaluation to true cloud native <coughs> functionalities. What they are? The robustness that we introduced by introducing additional monitoring and healing and the monitoring through a circuit breaking and the protecting the networks by using this monitored data. These are the capabilities that we monitor and automatically heal the services and when needed where there is a turbulence or there is a pause in the service. We also protect CNS from going into a panic state when, ex extern, uh, when access traffic coming from outside or due to whatever reasons, whether it is due to an access network failure or it is due to a malfunctionality or a misfunctionality of a switch or router, etc. The fourth one is you don't need to invest everything from beginning, but invest as you grow. What it means is when you invest, invest on demand. That is, we start giving up the auto scaling aspects from right from beginning so that the operators can start consuming it and invest the required hardware or consume the required hardware that is downgraded from the 4G traffic that is going to go down, which is getting used, reused for the 5G. And the fifth one is the automation at all phases of product life. What I mean by all phases of the product life is from the development, from the development testing, to pro from there to releasing it to the operators, nothing but communication service providers and who can download that uh, software, download the required test cases and put it through a DevOps cycle that is nothing but the day one and day two operation capabilities with and, uh, test cases of up to around 10,000 test cases that can be executed on this environment. So overall, that what you need is you need an extension of the Nokia SDM solution by just adding the AESF and UDM to the existing Nokia SDM that you already deployed. Now, I'll demonstrate the one of the use cases what I described before, that is the invest as you grow. That is the, the investment that you put in and for your feature on demand, not by default. Let me take you to the invest as you grow test case that I will demonstrate now. Now I'll start showing you the invest as you grow, nothing but the auto scaling capability of a Nokia SDM solution. Now I just picked up the UDM SDM service as an example to demonstrate to you how this auto scaling works. You see here only two service instances are what we are currently running and these two service instances the current CPU consumption is what plotted here by collecting their metrics from Kubernetes environment. And this is where you see the average CPU utilization 
by these two service instances and I kept a target CPU utilization of 35% to start scaling out. This is the current system that is running. Now what I do is, I had a simulator that is generating traffic towards this particular service where the simulator is generating 10 transactions per second to each one of these two services that are already running. When I start increasing the traffic, I just created an in interaction button towards my simulator where I am increasing this traffic from 10 transactions per second to 200 transactions per second. That's what you see here. Now initially it is 10 transactions per second. Now it's gone to 126 and 178 and 183. What it means? I am increasing the total traffic towards this service uh, which is part of AES of UDM by 20 times. With this, the utilization, the traffic, uh, the CPU utilization to handle this traffic will start going, but which is going to go appear here. But why it is not instantly appeared? Because I just kept a, a window of 30 seconds for monitoring and I gave a three such monitoring intervals to monitor and to ensure that yes, the increased traffic is not just a spike, but it is a increase and going to sustain that. That's what you see here. So then all of a sudden the traffic is increased and the CPU utilization of these two services gone up because they started getting almost 20 times more traffic than what it used to be before. And now you see here the average CPU utilization also going up. When it's gone up to 40 plus percentage wherein my target is just 35 percent, my system detects that yes, it has gone beyond my uh, permissible limit hence it starts to start scale out. That's what you exactly see here. It automatically started scaling out the third instance here, which is a needed uh, instance for handling this extra traffic. Now the third instance started and one out of four containers started here, you see. The moment all four containers starts, completes its initialization and the pod readiness, that is nothing but the service readiness, then you will see that the third instance of the service start appearing here. Now you see here, three out of four containers completed their initialization. The fourth container is going to have undergoing their starting and now that is complete. Now we see that yes, this all four containers of a given service is done and that's where you see the three, third service instance started appearing here. That means the third service instance created and now this third service instance will start taking the traffic that already initiated among, uh, distributed among these two, now there is, instead of these two taking the whole traffic, now the third instance will start sharing the traffic because the load balancer will now start distributing among three instances than the earlier two instances. As I said before, I kept an interval of 30 seconds for monitoring, monitoring CPU, hence you will see around 30 seconds time to realign this CPU utilization to its right value. It is not required to be 30 seconds, just for this demonstration purpose, I kept it at 30 seconds, but we can reduce it to as low as one second to monitor the CPU cycles. That is what is the interval of CPU monitoring. Now you see at the end of this interval, all these three almost close to each other by aligning themselves because the traffic distribution from load balancer is equally gone and equally distributed among three, wherein that average CPU utilization that is plotted here is now came down to around 30%, which is much under 35%. Hence, it doesn't require to make any further scale. If, if this average CPU utilization is still above 35%, then my algorithm will still continue uh, functioning and it will monitor, detect and say that yes, it's still above 35%, hence it requires another instance scaling. But for this purpose, I just kept it as a single instance scaling and hence, the average CPU utilization fell below 30%. So that is the scaling. But when the traffic comes down, I will show you how this excess pod instance will come down when the traffic scales down. Now I'm decreasing the traffic, which is going to decrease from this around 180 transactions per second to 10 transactions per second. That's what you see here, this 10 transactions from earlier 180 transactions. Now this traffic, now all these three services will start getting this 10, tran 10 transactions per second, wherein the CPU utilization of all these services will drastically come down from current around 30-35% utilization to as low as below 10 units of CPU. That's what you are seeing here. So <clears throat> once it touches this and then sustains there, wherein I kept this 
monitoring interval of 30 seconds and three such samples should be sustainable and should the reduced traffic should sustain for at least the three such intervals to make a decision to scale it down. So now that's the reason why it is not instantly scaling down but waiting for the three samples and three such intervals to complete before it can start scaling down. Now it has scaled, it has come down to that level and you see here the third instance that is created is now getting terminated. Nothing but the CPU resources that were allocated to this third instance are now given back to the common pool. You see here, the third instance, that is the green instance which was created, is now terminated and the only two instances, that is blue and red, are the ones that are still running and the average CPU utilization is below. If at all in future when the CPU utilization goes up because of the excess traffic, then the same will happen. This is only for one service we showed here, but the same applies for all service types, including load balancers. Thank you. This is what. Now, with this, we are coming to the end of our demo. Out of all this, the, there are three facts that I wanted you to take into consideration. One is, avoid extra investments by continue using Nokia SDM deployment just by adding needed extra software and the extra network functions, that is AES of UDM, to make use of SDM sandwich and SDM advanced cloud native functionality to, to keep your network robust and resilient. And the last one, and make use of Nokia SDM's auto scaling capability to avoid inefficient utilization of hardware and infrastructure. This will bring you to the confidence and allow more flexibility to automate, customize, monetize, and finally to reach your final 5G end goal. Hence, thank you. Thank you for your attention.